الطيب المبارك فيه الحمد لله الذي ليس كمثله شيء وهو السميع البصير المتعالي عن الشبيه والنذير الحمد لله جل وعلا وصلى الله وسلم على رسوله المصطفى ونبيه المجتبى وأمينه على وحي السلام وعلى آله المجباء وأصحابه الأتقياء خير الخلائق بعد الأنبياء ومن بهديهم اقتدى وبآثارهم اقتفى من المحدثين والمفسرين والفقهاء إلى يوم الجزاء أما بعد فقد قال الله عز وجل بعد أن أقول أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم المال والبنون زينة الحياة الدنيا والباقيات الصالحات خير عند ربك ثوابا وخير أملا وقال الله عز وجل ولو أن أهل القرى آمنوا واتقوا لفتحنا عليهم بركات من السماء والأرض ولكن كذبوا فأخذناهم بغتة وهم لا يشعرون وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم طوبى لعبد جعله الله مفتاحا للخير ومغلقا للشر وويل لعبد جعله الله مفتاحا للشر ومغلقا للخير أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم I begin in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most gracious, the most merciful. I send my humble salutation upon the children of Muhammad, his companions, his family members, and those who follow their footsteps until the day of resurrection. Respected brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the creator of every single thing. Khalaqa kull shayt. Allah has created everything. And Allah is the creator of every condition and situation. Many of times a person starts to blame people for what is going on around the globe. Yes, there is a contribution of human being because that's the test of every single human being. الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا. Allah is the one who has created life. Allah is the one who has created death. And the purpose of creating life and death so that He can test who does the best of action, who has become successful. And indeed, every single person, every single individual, every single believer. He has been sent or she has been sent into this world to serve the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya ayyuhal nas antumul fuqara'u ila Allah wa Allahu huwa al-ghaniyyul hameed. In yashak yudhidukum wa yakti bi khalqin jaleed wa ma dhalika ala Allah bi aziz. Allah says that all people, all of you need Allah and Allah doesn't need anything. Every single person, no matter what he owns, what he has, what capacity, what power he or she may have, they are all dependent upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every single person. Wallahu huwa al-ghani. Allah doesn't need anyone. That's why when a person acts in a negative way towards anything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made us the ummah wasat. Wa kadhalika ja'alnakum ummatan wasata. We have made you a moderate ummah. And what is that ummah? This is the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That even in our difficult moment, we don't Neglect the shukr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No matter what the situation is. This is why religion is sent to us to control our emotions. The emotion of a person wants, he wants to react to every, situ every single situation. 
the way whichever direction his or her emotion is pulling. Something that is not liked by this human being, he's going to go aggressively against it. Something that is liked with the human being, he is going to celebrate it in the best way that he can ever think. And Allah put down his hudud. Allah put down his, his boundaries. Because every single human being has been here not because they wanted to be here. Because Allah wanted us to be here. No one has come into this world with their own choice. And no one is going to leave this world with his or her own choice. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that when the time of a person comes, that we have put death inside you to make you realize that your life is not your life, it's the one that is given to you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If I act in a way that is disturbing my life, that is making me sinful in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that I have made a mistake. Because my hukum, the hukum that has come to me, it is to adopt every single situation in the best way possible, which Quran describes in the fact that he acts. That you will see things in this world that is disturbing, that is causing harm, that is causing a lot of difficulty. But there is a perimeter, there is a hudud, there are conditions that have been put down by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why as believers, as believers, we have been given hope. In every situation, no matter what we see with our own eyes, it is the test for us because Allah has sent us into this world to fulfill that test. Whatever we see around, a lot of these things that are being shared on the social media, what is happening in Gaza, and Allah help those people and assist them and remove their difficulty and condition and bring them assistance and help. And Allah Azza wa Jalla remove their suffering. But as a believer, it disturbs us. Now, in react, acting towards that disturbance, this is where our test is. This is where our test is. That are we going to be pulled by our emotions or are we going to do what the Prophet did? Allah describes an incident because remember no matter what the sufferings are there are no sufferings which are greater than the sufferings that were endured by Allah Rasulullah and his companion Salman al-Farthi Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal has narrated this narration in his Muslim Salman al-Farsi anhu, he is having a discussion with some of the people and someone raised a hand and asked a question to Salman al-Farsi that were you with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? He said, yes, alhamdulillah, I was with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then another companion, Hudayfa bin Yaman radiallahu alayhi wa the same question, were you with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Hudayfa bin Yaman said, Alhamdulillah, I was with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then this person said, you know, if we were during the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we would honor him and respect him and do so much for him that we would not even let him walk on earth. We would carry him in our shoulder. So you guys did not do your due diligence in respecting, honoring, giving, you know, the utmost respect to Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu We love him so much that we would carry him on our, our shoulder and not let him walk. Hudayfa bin Yaman 
radiallahu anhu, who is a companion, a very great companion of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the title of Sahib al-Sir, the possessor of the secrets of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A person that when Umar radiallahu anhu used to see that after the demise of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if Hudayfa is in a janazah, then Umar will attend that janazah radiallahu anhu. And if Hudayfa is not in that janazah, Umar will not attend that janazah. Why? Because this is the janazah of a manafiq. He has the list of the hypocrites. <coughs> so Hudayfa bin Yaman radiallahu anhu looked at this brother and he smiled at him and he said, My brother, with all due respect, if you were during the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I am afraid that you might not have been a Muslim. You might not be a Muslim. Because the sufferings, the difficulties, the conditions, the situations that we have gone through in serving the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it's unimaginable. And why all of this? Because we accepted the faith. We said that we have to do Allah. And Allah says, Am hasiktum an tadkhulu al-jannah wa lamma yaktikum mathal al-nadheena khalu min qablikum masadhum al-baksa'u wa al-darra'u wa zilziru hatta yaqul al-rasul wa al-nadheena amalu ma'ahu wa tanasuhu. That you think just by you claiming that I am a believer it is sufficient for you to go into jannah? No. Al-makari khuffati jannatu bil-makari Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Jannah has been surrounded with actions that are difficult. That your nafs don't want to do. It is, it, is control, it is difficult to control those emotions. But why we're going to do it? Because that's the order of Allah and that is the sunnah of his habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is what makari is. Something that you don't want to do but you are forced to do because the perimeter of Islam is there to stop you acting in an irrational way that's going to cause you difficulty for yourself and for the Muslims around us. A person goes outside, sees what's going on, and he acts in a, neglect, in, 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 in a neglected way. He, he acts in a, in a, a, a negative way. And what happens? The image of Islam and Muslim is being harmed. It is not that I'm going to do my part and do whatever way or however, however way I would like to do mine. Because there is a great, this is something not beyond me. It's not just about me. It's about the entire image. It's about Islams and Muslims. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no matter what these difficulties were, you saw the behavior of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa We've seen it. We know the signal. That no matter how bad a person would be towards the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa always acted in a nice way. But he didn't let go his effort because the connection is created between you and Allah before it's created between you and me. Man aslaha la bayna hu wa bayna wa bayni wa. The one who rectifies this connection between him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Aslah Allah baynahu wa bayna abdi wa fi riwayatin wa bayna khalqi. Allah will rectify his relation with the people around him. That's the religion that we've been given. It's a connection that we develop between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So nevertheless, Qadifa bin Yaman wa biyallahu anhu describes the situation. And he says that I remember the night of the Battle of Trench, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes it in Surah Al Ahzab. They are very present, the believers were shaken. And not just normally shaken, it was shaken very heavily. Hosea bin Yaman radiallahu anhu says, we were so cold and we had so much less clothes that we weren't able to even stand up and due to hunger and cold and so so many conditions at once. And we are patrolling outside towards this trench that the, the people on the other side of the trench not come over. 
And he said that every single person used to dig a hole underneath him and try to gather some heat from the earth so that they can feel comfortable. They go inside the earth and start sitting down. And in the midst of this difficulty, the Prophet ﷺ said, who is going to stand up and go and get some information from, uh, for us from the, uh, from the Quraysh, what they're planning to do. And no one stood up. The second time the Prophet ﷺ gave the same offer, no one stood up. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, Um ya Hudayfa. Hudayfa in Yaman, you stand. So Hudayfa said, I could barely, you know, stand up. I couldn't, I didn't have any strength left inside me. It was so cold and there is no clothes, nothing, barely one sheet only on me. But this was the hukum of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No matter how much diff my nafs doesn't want to get. It's telling me you just keep on sitting, but no, this is the hukum of the Prophet. ﷺ. So Huzayfa radiallahu stood up immediately. He's describing this story to this person who said that we would carry the Prophet on our shoulders. He's describing the story to him. That I had to stand up, so I stood up. And Huzayfa bin Yaman radiallahu says, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made dua for me and then he gave me his sheet and when I covered myself with the sheet of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam it was just like a heater for me it's like a warm blanket I don't see cold, I don't even feel hungry and how did this happen? this is a miracle, right? Mu'jiza but when do Mu'jiza happen? When you do ita'atullah and when you do ita'atul Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hudayfa said, no, I'm going to go against my nafs and stand up for the ita'at of Allah and ita'at. Because when you want ita'at, when you do ita'at wa rasulah, whoever obeys Allah and his command and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa man yuti'ir rasul faqad ita'atullah. The one who follows the rasul, indeed he has obeyed the commands of Allah. So I stood up with that. And what happened? Allah removed all my conditions. My hunger was gone. The cold weather was not harming me at all. When we give answer to the thought of Allah and the thought of Rasul, Allah will bring. This is something that goes on in our life. How many of us have actually thought about this? And this is something to actually think about. That my part in contributing towards what's going on with the Muslims in Gaza, that I'm going to eliminate one sin that I habitually bring in my life, I'm going to eliminate. I'm going to stop this disobedience of Allah in my life. So that my dua can become accepted for the brothers and sisters who are going through suffering. Because those who become shuhada, they receive their gender. The test is for you and I. The people who are going through difficulty, Allah Azza wa Jalla says, "Man yattakhid minkum shuhada." Allah knows who is going to give the glad tidings and the great honor of shahid. But the test comes down to you and I, my brothers and sisters. So first, number one, action item: be thankful to Allah. Because shukr is something that is the ibadah of this world, it's the ibadah of anbiya, it's the ibadah of mu'mineen, it's the ibadah of malaika, and it's the ibadah of anbiya, and it's the ibadah of ahlul jannah. Even the people of jannah are going to do shukr of Allah Azza wa Jal. Alhamdulillah, madhi hadana li hadha wa ma kunna li nahtabiya wa ma hadana. We are thankful to Allah that Allah gave us jannah. Even in going into Jannah, you're going to thank Allah. So first and foremost, in shukr. It's not just about Thanksgiving once a year. It's the daily shukr that we need to do on a daily basis. Because when we are so much engrossed in negative things, we forget to thank Allah Azza wa Jalla. And Anbiya and Salihin were those people, even if they're in their difficult moments, they used to thank Allah Azza wa Jalla on a regular basis because it could have been worse. 
That's number one. Number two, my action should be governed by the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu I'm going to create awareness, but I'm going to create an awareness in a way that is positive and that gives a positive image to Islam and Muslim. I'm not going to do it in such a way that is harming me or my family or my community or the Muslims at large. That's the action that we need to take into consideration. We cannot just follow our emotions and do whatever we feel like doing, how others are doing, because no, we have the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that sunnah says that no matter how ignorant the other side become, you always have a good character to show. You are always responding in a positive way to the fact that he And number three, I am going to connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By two things, number one, asking Allah for forgiveness of my own past. And eliminating a sin that I'm committing in my life. Because we don't have to judge anyone. We just have to judge our own self. We all know ourselves what we are involved in. And we are the judge for our own action. What do I have that Allah doesn't like? And I'm going to remove that. And once I remove that, remember, staying away from sin is an ibadah. It's a worship. And when you do a worship, your du'as are being accepted. So the minute you make that intention that I will stay away from this sin, and you ask repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, at that time you make du'a, and that du'a is going to go to the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah. And remember, we are not made responsible for outcomes. We are only made responsible of, responsible of action. Do your action and Allah is looking at your action. We are not making, I've been making dua for the past 60 days for these brothers and sisters that are going through suffering, but the suffering are still staying and increasing. My duas are not working. We are not here to decide this whose dua is working. Maybe our dua is working in a way that Allah wants and not the way we want. Because Allah knows the affairs more than we do. And Allah knows the unseen, but we don't know anything. And that's why we have been made responsible to do our part by doing the amal. Not judge if the amal is working or not. That is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is going to judge. Maybe my amal today, if the sahaba only worried about their current actions and their affairs of that time, and didn't worry about the entire Muslim Ummah, today we will not have this faith that we are enjoying. Because they worked, they continued to work, they didn't look at the outcome, what's going on, I'm going to do my part and move on. But the effects will come from Allah, positive effects will come. Our effort of today is going to show an impact 10 years from now, inshallah. Our dua today is going to bring its fruits 10 years from now. Allah knows when it's going to happen. But our part is just to continue to do amal as long as Allah Azza wa Jal grants us strength. We ask Allah to grant us the understanding. We ask Allah to make us amongst the believers. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help and assist us. We have forgive our sins. Those from our loved ones that have passed away, we ask Allah to grant them Jannah for those from our loved ones, those who are sick, we ask Allah to grant everybody shifa, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help our brothers and sisters in Gaza. Ameen ya Rabbul Alameen. Aqulu qawli hala. Astaghfiru Allah ali wa lakum wa nisa'il muslimina fi astaghfiru. Inna umu al-ghafiru.
تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم اغفر لنا وللمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيد الدعوات عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغض يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله العلي العظيم يذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم ولذكر الله تعالى أعلى وأعز وأجل وأهم وأكبر والله يعلم ما تسعون